Hello and welcome to Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. I'm Becky Parker Geist and I'm your host. Audiobook Connection is your place to learn about the audiobook creative process in discussions between the authors, narrators, producers, and post production teams that bring them all together, as well as guests who have listened to the audiobooks and have questions for the creative teams. This podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Hello, everyone. I have with me today Jared Chambers. Jared's primary businesses are the publishing experience and the processing experience, or as he would say, the processing experience. He'll say it better than I. Helping authors achieve their goals. Jared also serves as an audiobook project manager for Pro Audio Voices. His background and experience in film and TV, as well as publishing, provide a foundation for work in audiobook production that serves his clients and the Pro Audio Voices team very well. Jared, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you, Becky. It's great to be here and be chatting with you. I'm very uh, excited for this one. Great. So I thought I'd start off by just providing some context for our listeners, a bit of history. So Jared first started working with us at Pro Audio Voices as a client. So he was managing the audiobook project for his father, Gordon Lee Chambers, and his book, Searching for Monkumar, a mystical tale about finding freedom, friendship, and spirituality. So Jared, I thought, let's start there which I think was near the start of your journey into the indie publishing and audiobook worlds. So first of all, what kicked you off in getting started in publishing? It's a pretty long story and it's a pretty exciting one. But as you mentioned, Searching for Monk Kumar was really the stepping stone for me to land in the publishing world, the self-publishing world. And I was lucky enough to have a father who's a writer and he's written written many books over the years. I remember writing books with him as a three-year-old. We used to sit there and write books together, children's books, and we've got a, a whole shelf full of them. So it's always... <laughs> oh, that's great. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, it's always been sort of things that we always did together from a very young age. So... It worked really well when he came to me with the book Searching for Monkuma because it also kind of coincided with where I was in my life because I'd I'd landed in Brazil. My partner, she's Brazilian, and she had a contract. She's a doctor working there for four years. So I found myself in Brazil unable to speak the language and having left my previous job behind and I kind of needed to reinvent myself and figure out what I was going to do. And it was a very hard starting to find a job around there when you don't speak Portuguese. So it was quite challenging. <laughs> right. So I, yeah. I started spending some time online, of course, going trying to figure out what I was going to do. And my dad came to me and said, look, I've got, I've got this book that is sitting on my hard drive and I would love to get it published. And he'd had some talk with a like a another publishing company, and the, the, it just hadn't worked out really well. He looked, he was looking for a more authentic experience where people were interested in his book and what the story was about. They weren't just trying to put him through some sales pipeline. They, you know, right. he wanted someone that was kind of invested in it. So he said to me, "Well, why don't you publish it?" And I was a little bit taken aback because I'd never even thought about publishing books. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought, okay, well, let me have a read first of the book. Let me see if I actually like it because I prefer to be working on something that I I have a connection with. Right. It's easier to get started on something I find if you if you feel invested in it. So of course as my father and I, I I'm obliged to say yes, but no, I decided <laughs> <laughs> I decided I would read it and and get back to him. Anyway, I read I read the book and I really loved it. It sort of aligns with my thinking and my beliefs. It's a great ad- adventure story throughout India. So it's it was perfect. So I said yes, I'll have a go. But of course, I had to start at the very beginning. So I spent 
two years with my head inside the books and basically learning as much as I could about publishing books from going through the editing process, um, formatting the books, cover design, how to release your books, your social media campaigns. So I, I really went into learning that process back to front. Yeah. And also as part of that project, we decided to do an audio book, which was one of the greatest decisions I ever made because I got introduced to Pro Audio Voices, which was a really amazing experience working with Becky, yourself and your team at that time, which was it's going back a couple of years now. But um, it was just really nice to be taken on the journey because I know some experiences with people in other in in, in in other companies, you feel as though you're a little bit separate from the process. But I feel like with Pro Audio Voices, you go on that concierge service. You know, you feel like you're yeah. going along on the journey. And for me, that's very important, especially when it comes to releasing work into the world, you know, because yeah, it's a very special, special moment when you share that book or that story and you want it to be genuine and you want it to have been a beautiful experience along the way. Yeah. And I just just say from our side of things, that I was really excited to be working on this book as well because the content also really speaks to me and, you know, the journey and being able to, you were just really wonderful to work with. And so was your dad. And then also being able to bring in some of those like musical elements that we were, we incorporated into that book was just, I think, magical. I am blown away, Becky, about the musical side of it that we, we put together because we had Wallace it's Har- Harvey Wallace. Wallace Harvey. Yeah. Wallace Harvey. Wall- Wallace yeah. Harvey. Yes. My apologies. He spent some a lot of time composing parts for that project, and what he came, what he ended up with, was just the most amazing music. And we intertwined it throughout the book. Yeah. There are two main characters that go on the journey throughout the book, and they're Baals, so they're wandering minstrels basically, and their their life is built around music. So it was really important to have that musical element added to the audiobook. And I didn't know if that was even possible when I first started out working with you guys. I asked, I remember asking you guys, can we add music? Is that something that's done in an audiobook? So I was right. really had no idea about audiobooks at that time. And to be honest, I wasn't even reading a lot of audiobooks or listening to audiobooks at that time which has changed since then. Now I don't read books. I only listen to audio. So (laughs) you get hooked. (laughs) Yeah. Look, it's really, it's such a big part of the industry now. Audio is it's, and it's for me, the easiest way to, to listen to books. So it was really fitting to, to do that part of it because I was learning the publishing print publishing side of it. And then going on the journey of audio and learning that process and having that released it just felt like that was the whole package that you can do for publishing a book. And, of yeah. course, I was doing it for my dad, so it was a great learning experience. I made lots of mistakes along the way. I learned a lot of things. So it was yeah, a wonderful, wonderful experience. And obviously the connection yeah. to you guys was a really special thing to have come out of it. And a, there is a little bit for any of our listeners that want to go back to one of our earlier episodes, we did an interview also with your dad, episode 29 of Audiobook Connection podcast. But there's, I thought there was a really, just some beautiful synchronicities. So you and your dad were working on that, you know, the book side and Jerry Lee, my daughter and I were working on the audiobook side of it. And so it just felt like this, uh, a very, very special experience in so many ways. Yeah, it's so true. And uh, yeah, I really felt that as well. It really just gelled nicely together and we all sort of it felt felt really real, the whole project. So it was yeah. it was nice to have some so that family connection in connected to it, which is a big part of my life. You know, family is very important. So yeah. it's nice to have um, been able to intertwine that into the project because I feel now looking back at the product the the print and the audio they're really amazing products you know yeah, it's it's really such are. an amazing body of work and i i couldn't be more proud that that's was sort of where i kicked off 
my work in the publishing industry. So it's kind of yeah. a really, a really nice, solid, concrete base. Yeah. And we'll make sure to include in the description and show notes, you know, the link to find the audiobook um, as well as yeah. the print book. So, yeah, great. And then sort of moving along in this journey, now we got that audiobook produced and out there and some little bit of time went by and then it was around last Octo August or September I think that that you joined the Pro Audio Voices team as a project manager and so now you're helping to guide other authors through their audiobook projects so what's that shift been like for you well I remember that day really well you sent out an email sort of putting out the call to your community around right. uh, we're looking for people to join the Pro Audio Voices team. And I saw the email and I first looked at it and I thought, oh, that I don't know anything about audio. That's not really my space. And But then I thought about it a little bit more and I thought, well, you know, I've got some experience in publishing. By that point, I'd published seven books by that time. So I'd gone mm -hmm. through the process. I'd guided authors through the publishing process. So I knew that side of it. Where, and I knew Pro Audio Voices were very, they take a lot of pride in that, that side of it, which is that sort of concierge service that guiding you through the journey. So I, I knew I had that kind of skills of working with people. But of course, I had no skills in audio. I was like, I've got no idea where to start with that, you know. But when we when uh, when we decided to work together, uh, we got on, and uh, your lovely team helped me learn the ropes. And I was blown away by how the processes you already had built in place. So I basically just had to jump in and learn how the pro the journey worked from step one to step finish. And it was right. it was a really great transition actually because it was really a new space for me and something I enjoyed doing immensely from from the beginning and I got to learn a lot about audio and the different pr processes that are required to actually get an audio book done it's a lot more complicated than I had anticipated there's a lot of moving parts there's a lot of people involved audio engineers you know the narrator yeah you know the author you, so you've got to juggle a lot of different people and you need to to manage that quite well otherwise it can get it can get lost you know so you have to be very clear yeah. on on what's being done and obviously there are there are different steps and it's very key in the beginning to get a clear understanding from the author of what they're trying to achieve, what they want from their audio book. And then also, right. you know, just the, the manuscript prep. I didn't even think about that, but just for, for <laughs> me, uh, like prepping a manuscript in print, obviously there's the editing and then the formatting and then it's, it's kind of ready to go. But Jerry Lee, she takes a lot of time and she preps manuscripts, sets out like track numbering and stuff. You know, it's just things I didn't really think about right. at that time, but makes complete sense because when you go to organize yeah. the project and bring it together, you need it all to be in line. Otherwise, it can get all very <laughs> confusing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you certainly brought a level of project management skills and, and just being the kind of person who's easy to work with, you know, ready to jump in and learn the processes and such. It's been absolutely delightful having you on the team. Oh, it's been a delight. I've enjoyed myself so much. That's good. It's good. And then, so, of course, sometimes we have authors who are narrating, which yes. adds another whole level, right? So what are some of the things that you've discovered in the process in working with authors who are doing their own narration? Yeah, well, this is this is also another element because there are different styles of audiobooks that can be created. I initially thought, okay, it's just get a narrator in and do the book, but no, that's there's right. there's so many different types of projects that you can do, and one of them, like you mentioned, is the author narration, which I just finished up working on a book with an author called John Nance, and his book is Rediscovering Republicanism which was an interesting book for me to work on. 
but it was a really amazing experience and he did the narration himself and that added a whole new element because he wasn't a professional he had never done it before yeah so he was learning i was learning as well along the way right. but we had amazing support from you and Kathy, another team member from Pro Audio Voices who works closely with authors to help them set up their recording kit, get them to understand the process, teach them the ways, you know. So that was a really amazing experience to see him transform as an author throughout that process because he picked it up really quickly. I'm not sure if this is the same for everybody. Uh, everybody learns differently, but he seemed to pick it up quite quickly and he spoke very well. So we didn't have a lot of complications there. He was very confident in what he was doing. He obviously knew his book very well. So he just sort of jumped in and he got the stuff recorded really quickly. And yeah, yeah it was, it was, it was a really great experience to see. It come together from that side because it was really close to him as the author and it was very important for him to have it in his voice and read in his voice. So I think that really shone through it in the end. Yeah. And then you've also had a project where the author did just a short segment. So her voice is in the project and this is an author in South Africa. So that was a different kind of experience. Yes, yeah, so I had a very different experience working on Jackie Burnett's book, Life is Not Yoga, an amazing journey, a very long journey, which is just all finalized now. I see her book went up online a week and a half ago. So I was really, really happy to see that up online. I was actually chatting to her on the phone the other day and she is over the moon. She's really, really happy. Yeah. But that it's kind of like having a new baby, yeah. isn't it? You know, you're or like you're the uncle. Yeah. And <laughs> I was like, <laughs> yes. So, so I, I actually showed my mom. I said, oh, oh look, mom, this one's up online finally. And she said, oh, I'm going to download it. So she's already started listening to that. So that was, um, yeah, that's great. That was great. But that was a really amazing experience. That book, it was, we found a, a narrator who her voice really suited the style of the book and Jackie loved the sound of her voice and I listened to it over and over again and the voice really did suit the style of book that Jackie was going for. Yeah. And yeah. Oh, we had some back and forths in the beginning. We had some complications getting getting the narrator started and anyway, we we got through all that and I'm so happy we did because the final product is exactly what Jackie was looking for, you know. But yeah, she yeah. also did some readings throughout the book, which is, is quite interesting. So you've got that crossover between having a professional narrator and having an author speak on it, not, not doing the entire book, just doing parts. And right. she found it quite confronting in the beginning. And I mm -hmm. tend to agree with that. I, I find it very difficult to to listen to my own voice and to speak on, on camera and stuff. I always look back at it and go, oh, I could have done that better. I could have done this. So <laughs> so we kind of guided her through that that process as well, which was which was great. Really a great experience. And we had to get her set up in a in a um, professional studio and she's based in Cape Town in South Africa. So that's another element that I really enjoy is the the ability to do this remotely. Yeah. Which, you know, you couldn't have done not that long ago, you know, with Zoom and with <laughs> right. all this yeah. ability yeah. to connect via drive and and all this ability to do things online has allowed us to do projects that could be scattered across the world, which is amazing. So I was Right. In Brazil and Jackie was in Cape Town in South Africa and you were over in the US, you know, it's like yeah, really amazing that we could all bring all those parts together to then f have this one whole project that is stream stream streamless throughout from beginning yeah. to end yeah. and had influence from all around the world. It's, it's, it's quite a special thing to look at. Yeah. 
And I know that along the way in that project, you know, because this podcast is sort of the behind the scenes, you know, just to there, there were some challenges in terms of the scheduling, you know, the narrator being able to deliver on a schedule that we were hoping for. So there is a bit of, and certainly was in this case, a bit of juggling between marketing plans for a very proactive author who's, you know, really got their marketing act together, and then having to work through the challenges that sometimes can come up, and they can come up for all kinds of reasons. And we certainly have seen this over the last couple of years with COVID as a part of our world picture with, you know, narrators getting sick or having, you know, health challenges. So it's a very complicated picture, as you said. And it's so exciting to be able to work together and through the challenges as well. We all have the same goal. We want it to be the best it can be. And we also want to, you know, get it ready in as timely a fashion as we can. And sometimes it feels like those are almost in opposition, but we're really holding both of those to be able to move forward and get the project rolling out as best it can. Yeah. And it's it's such a big part, especially as a project manager and in any business space as well, is, is managing that client expectation, you know, from the get-go. And and it's it's not always clear cut and obviously there's a lot of other things that can come into play that can throw you off that course. But all you can do is be as prepared as possible and be clear and honest about the situation. I've found, especially when you're talking to authors, especially like Jackie, she was really organized. She ran a very, very tight social media campaign. She's very professional. She runs a business off the back end of it. And so she was very on the ball. She was very ready to hit those, those target deadlines. Those target deadlines, yeah. Yeah. So I found it very difficult because normally I was in a position where, if needs be, I'd work through the night and I could personally get it done. Right. But when you're working with like uh, a narrator, where it's only her or the, it's only the narrator that can complete that task, you're very much in their arms. You know, you're, you're pretty much what waiting yeah. for them to, to provide the, the final product for you to be able to move right. forward. Yeah. <laughs> so that was something I had to to work with and I wasn't able to set a a target mile or set any milestone that we could hit because I was really just waiting for the narrator to come through in the end and that was quite a challenging aspect <laughs> to to work with but yeah. It was a really good learning curve yeah. because I now know that you have to be very clear from the upfront, from the start. And when you're having that conversation with the narrator, okay, these are our expectations. These are the target deadlines. We must make those deadlines. Do you think you can make that deadline? Tell me honestly, right. is that right. something that you can make? It's all right if you can't. Don't worry. Tell me. So then I can yeah. talk to the client and chat with them and say, look, we, we're not going to be able to make that timeline. Let's throw, let's push it out a little bit. This is more reasonable. And they'll be happy with that because they know, yeah. they know what's going on. They don't feel like they're being left, being forgotten, you know? Right. You know, you bring up such a, a great point about in the position of project management, there is so much of we're depending on other people, you know, to do certain things. It's both the narration, it's also the audio engineering side of things, the mastering, there's all these other components, right? And it's important to, like that clear communication from everybody is so, so important. And then of course, you know, then we can keep our clients well informed as to mm -hmm. what's going on, you know. And then I was going to say that there are occasions, you know, in a narrator, for example, may have something terrible happen or they disappear and we don't really know what's happened. Thankfully, it doesn't happen mm. frequently, <laughs> but it can happen, you know, and just, you know, we then will we'll deal with those situations, you know, where it's like that usually will mean that we need to recast a project, but it can set things back in, in timeline. 
again, I, I don't think we really had that happen before COVID came along and sort of changed our world so dramatically. But it's just something that, you know, at that peak behind the scenes, it's something that can happen. And just to be aware. Yeah. That. Yeah, that's that's right. It's, it, and it, especially this, I think, like with Jackie's project, it was right in that time where COVID was, was such a big part of our existence at that time. And it was very challenging. And I, I do know that the narrator, she did get COVID. So that was an, an element that was that was added into the project, into the mix. And yeah, I guess it was just something you, you can't avoid that happening. It's about trying to decipher that problem as well, because sometimes you can't get a clear message from people as to where they are and what's going on for them. Yeah. So you really need to be very careful because it's easy to get emotional and go, oh, you need to have this done by this this moment. But you need to step back and go like, okay, what's happening for you in your life? There must be something going on right. that's holding up proceedings. You know, how can we how can we address that situation? Right. What can we put in place to right. assist you, to help you? Can we can we provide prompts? Can we can we put together a recording schedule what what are the things that will make the path of least resistance for you to get this get this done yeah yeah it's really a compassionate approach to project management yeah and i very much in line i think with our core values and and you know who we want to who we want to be in the world yeah. you know so yeah the, the other side Beautiful. of it which I, I wanted to mention is the that the narrator is off can can be people that we've worked with in the past, but of, often can be people that might be the first time that you've worked with them. So yeah. managing how they work, it's it's the blind leading the lot blind in the beginning a little bit because we don't know how they they work, what's their their workflow is like, how quickly they get jobs done. So that can be kind of an additional factor that you only pick up on job as you're going along. But what I do know is that the Pro Audio Voices team have a has a very great team of editors and masters that work with audio all the time. And that part of it we can manage quite easily because we know how they work and we know which editors are busy at what time and what other projects right. they have on. So you can kind of put together a timeline that's a little bit more concrete because we know the team will will deliver when when they're asked to. Yeah. So that part of the project is really great because the team works really well together and we've got lots of great internal processes that make that happen. And and that obviously is yeah. because of you, Becky, and you've created such an amazing business over over your career and you've put together all these you've this pro the process that you've built for producing audiobooks is amazing. Like I I jumped in with zero experience and and could do it. You know, you've created that that ability for people to follow that that journey throughout and and come out with an audio book at the end, which is really special. I have to really hand a lot of, of that of credit to the team overall in being able to develop those uh, processes because it's not been me alone. But I think what I have been able to do is to build a team that knows that we want their input. We want their help to make it even better. So everyone really is invested in making it the best that it can be, you know, the best experience for everyone involved. And I love that about our team. I feel so honored to have, you know, the team that we have. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Let's take a short pause while I share a little bit more about the audiobook Searching for Mankumar, a mystical tale about finding freedom, friendship, and spirituality by Gordon Lee Chambers. Follow an epic pilgrimage of two lifelong friends, wandering minstrels from West Bengal. The novel is set in India at the turn of the century. That was where the original film material which needed the story was shot. Actually, were it not for the original film footage, which set the Indian theme, the book could have been set anywhere in the world. It could just as easily be two shaman walking through Central America, an aboriginal tracker in the heart of Australia. 
two monks escaping from Tibet, to medicine mystics in Africa, Sufi poets in Eurasia, or a couple of Christian mystics traveling through Europe. Here's a sample from that audiobook. Think about it logically. Who are you? He paused to allow the DJ to consider his words before he continued. I mean, who are you, really? Who is speaking these words? Who is seeing these things? Who is hearing these sounds? The photographer left these rhetorical questions hanging. They continued to walk along the narrow lanes in quiet reflection, when they were delivered yet another remarkable surprise. Enchanting melodies, floating faintly on the warm night air drifted within earshot. The DJ's deliberations ceased. His mental anguish stopped. His insatiable appetite for sound took over. As if he were an auditory bloodhound, he followed this scent down the narrow lanes until he discovered the source. The pale yellow glow of a doorway spilt onto the cobblestone street. The musical ragas were coming from inside. The DJ, a well-versed musician, already knew that the raga was the most important concept that any serious student of Indian music must understand. His excitement became palpable when he judged by the quality of the succulent sounds that the proponent of this particular rendition was an accomplished student. The strings of the sarod were being plucked with mastery, and the music was floating sublimely over the dimly lit threshold. Such was the charm of the exquisite harmonies that they stood in the street momentarily transfixed as they savoured the sounds. The photographer and the DJ looked at each other and grinned. Without invitation, they stepped into the adventure. Raga in Sanskrit means color or passion. This was precisely what greeted them as they stepped through the opening into a cinnamon world of sensual movement, burning incense and sound delights. The dancer caught their eye first. She weaved a sublime spell. In that moment, she was the ultimate enchantress. With bells and rings on her toes, her bare feet stamped out a passionate rhythm. She twisted in time to the tabla drum. The sound of the bells around her ankles rang out in unison. A colorful red and green sari swirled around her slender body. Long hair flicked wildly around her head and shoulders. Dark, intense eyes the essence of mystique bored into the souls of the onlookers. Uplifted hands, ordained with henna designs, snaked above her head and flew out to the side. Like wings, they gracefully flapped as she whirled and twirled. Her arms folded into her body like a closing flower. In this collapsed form, she was dark and brooding. But she dwelt only momentarily in this shadowy space before she exploded again, opening with a renewed fragrance and passion, her stunning smile bloomed and made the world a more beautiful place. The DJ was totally mesmerized by her form, movement and beauty. The senior Sarod player, who until then had been coupled in an emotional embrace with his instrument, looked up. With an infectious smile, he beckoned them to enter. The photographer pointed to his camera, signaling his desire to do some filming. The Sarod player, still smiling, nodded before resuming the intimate affair with his instrument, bringing the sounds of this ancient land to life. The photographer relished the opportunity to introduce his art and started to capture this spontaneous spectacle. The DJ pressed his mouth to the photographer's ear, keen to espouse his considerable knowledge on the subject. Did you know? He whispered that although the sarod is a classical Indian instrument, it actually originated from a Persian instrument in the 16th century, the Rajasthani. West Bengali instrument makers continued making changes to its shape. Get your copy today at bit.ly slash mankumar. That's b-i-t dot l-y slash m-o-n-k-u-m-a-r. Is there anything that you would 
you know, from where you sit now, is there anything that you would go, oh, you know, now I've learned this thing. And if I were able to communicate that back to, and I was just starting on the author side or the project manager side on the, you know, from the publishing, anything that comes to mind that you would go, oh, yeah, that would be a good thing for authors to know as they head into audiobooks. <laughs> I, I mean, I think you've covered several things in your discoveries, mm. but if there's anything else that jumps out at you. Yeah, look, I think if you're making the jump from print to audio, you need to understand that they're two different medias. You know, they're, they're two, obviously they're telling the same story, but they're very different in the way that they're presented. You know, it's, it's a completely different experience when you sit down and read a book to when you sit down and listen to a book. So you need to kind of take that into mind when you're producing a audio book because I find that it's it's easy to get caught up in the detail in audio books like really fine detail or this word was slightly wrong or you know if you just mm -hmm. step back a bit and listen to the flow of it and you go oh actually the the narrator's natural flow works nicely there you know and instead of going and trying yeah. to pick through it with a fine tooth comb and pull out every right, individual right. thing so that it aligns directly with your with your print version. Obviously, we want to get it yeah. as close as possible, of course. But sometimes, you know, just that natural flow is better than going back and editing it over and over and over again because you don't know where the narrator is going to be. They might be, it might be three weeks later and the narrator might have had a, had a terrible morning or something and they, they come in and their voice sounds different. So you, you're never going right, to get yeah. that, that exact same flow as you do when they first read through it. So I think it's good right. to look at it and just take a little bit of a step back before you, you match it up with your manuscript and go, well, it's not word for word. It's step back and go, okay, well, actually, if I was listening to that as a new ear, as somebody has never listened to this before, would it make sense? Would it flow nicely? Right. Because that I think is very important to, to make sure that it doesn't get too chopped up along the way. Otherwise, you lose that natural. That comes yeah. Through. No, you make an excellent, excellent point. I will often liken it to the forest for the trees kind of thing, you know, it's like sometimes authors get so close, it was like being right up, you know, staring close to the bark of the tree, you know, and <laughs> wait a minute, this this little thing is not exactly right the way I imagined it, yeah. right? But if you just just pull back and have that listening experience, and this is, it's actually a great segue into, because I want to talk a little bit about the project you're working on now. And this is exactly how I listened to the audiobook that we're currently producing mm. for my book. The The book we're talking about is The Left Turn, Two Lives, Worlds Apart. And it's co-narrated. So I narrated the female chapters for that character. And then we had another narrator who did, uh, J.S. Arquin, who did the male part of the book. So when I listened to his files... I just closed my eyes and listened and really paid attention to the story. That was the best way, I think, to review audio files because I was then able to hear, there were a couple of things that I went, oh, wait a minute, is that right? Sometimes it was me discovering a typo because he'd read it right and I, you know, it was an error in the book. But I, I might not have caught it had I done it, you know, what, just following the script, because those are the very kinds of things that we, our brains just fix without even bothering to notice. So let's talk a little bit from your perspective, you know, you're, as project manager for this one, uh, what this has been like for you. Yeah, well, thank you, Becky. I feel very privileged to be working on your book. It seems very fitting as I worked with you on my father's book and now I get to work with you and Jerry Lee on your book. It's um, very fitting and, and it's a great privilege to, um, to have been given this opportunity and I, I, I'm very grateful. Look, this project is, is amazing and, and so far it's obviously working with you, Becky, because you know the industry so well and you're so professional. 
that it's flowing really, really well. And obviously, JS here is very, he's very good as well. He's pumped out the tracks really quickly and really, really yeah. high quality. And yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a great little team dynamic going on at the moment because it's, it's flowing yeah. very, very quickly. And just relating back to that point about how you, how you listen through with your eyes closed, you listen to the actual listening experience, you know. So you've listened from beginning to end and, and you've picked out the things that naturally get right. pulled out by your ear. So that I, f- I think is a very, it's hard for a lot of people mm-hmm. to believe, but it's true. Your, your, your natural ear actually will pull out those parts more than you, yeah. but more than you know. You know, you think, oh, I've got to be looking at every line to be able yeah. to, to hear that. No, it's not, it's not true. Your, your ear will, will say, hold on, that's not right. Or something that's, that yeah. word's not, I didn't, I don't remember writing that word or, or something like that. And then yeah. you can reference it. But yeah, it's, it's, it's quite amazing how quickly we've run through this, this process and, and that's another side of it is that the more you request edits, the more you go back and forth, it, it's got to go back to the editor. It's got to, you know, there's a lot of hands that it's got to go through. So that also right. extends your timeline. Mm-hmm. So in terms of like, if you're looking to hit target deadlines, it's, it's very beneficial if you don't yeah. have to edit <laughs> multiple yeah. times because it's not an easy process to go in and, edit a track, make sure it sounds right. good, make sure all the levels are right, make sure you've right. cut the right <laughs> parts. <laughs> yep, that the tone is correct where you've done a, a pickup. Yeah. yeah. So this book is, um, you know, as I said, it's two narrators. And in the first part of the book, most of the book, they're kind of running parallel. They're not like in scenes with each other. And at the end of the book, they are together. And so I thought, oh, well, wouldn't it be perfect to do sort of a full cast treatment on those chapters where we're in the same scenes? And so we did that. And I think it just, it upholds and supports the whole journey of the book, you know, to be able to be separate and then that coming together at the end. And it was just a really fun process to do that with J.S., so he's also based in Portland, Oregon, where I am. But we each were in our own studios, which was appropriate because even though we could have physically come into the same space, all of our audio up to, you know, in the other chapters was in our separate spaces. So it made sense to maintain that for post-production and mastering reasons, <laughs> but to be able to be on a call and to go through and record those chapters as if we were in the same room so we could have those genuine conversations and react to each other. And it's so rewarding. We actors miss being, you know, the, <laughs> those of us who haven't been able to be in theaters, you know, on stage for some time, kind of miss that. And this is about the closest I've gotten is to be able to do these kinds of sessions. Yeah, and it's it's such an amazing dynamic. I was listening to that the other day where that part where you guys have what Becky's just describing there. So there's this back and forth between the two characters, the dialogue, and doing that in a sense live recording almost where you guys going back and forth, you get that natural banter, you get that that feeling that it's it's actually two people there yeah having a having a real conversation you know it's like it really shines through when you do it in that way obviously both of you yourself becky and js have a lot of experience narrating you know that that shines through but the way you two got together and did that you guys jumped on zoom i believe and you had yeah. that you know and so you kind of you get that element of it's the same day, you guys are reading together, you know, it's not, it feels very together rather than right. it's been done separately. So you feel like the energy, you both are on that same energy, the thing is is, is flowing together rather than it's just picking up from where somebody else left off. 
Right. Because it, it can so easily, when we're not doing the scenes, we're, we're acting as if the other person is saying the lines the way we hear them in our head. But, you know, they don't always say them the way we think they're going to say them. Right. You know, when J.S. says what he says in a particular way, it affects the way I'm going to say my next line. So to do that completely separately, you know, we, we miss out on that opportunity to have that really genuine exchange. Look, I'm just really excited to be working on the left turn with you. And I, I can't wait to get that out, which we should be getting that out pretty soon. Yeah. I know you've got plans to to launch it on uh, Amplify in the next month. So I'm really looking forward to getting that out and being a part of your book. I just was thinking, relating back to that point about working with the two narrators in the in the same similar space. I was wondering for you as an author, obviously you you wrote the book. You mentioned an interesting point before. You said that JS read something in a way that kind of potentially surprised you. Was ah, oh, and you, you picked up on that. So it must be quite a an interesting experience because when you write something, you write it in your head and you hear it the way you have written it potentially and then you can see how other people might pick it up in a different way and maybe for the best or maybe not or it might it must be quite a amazing feeling to see how people represent your work yeah it's it is really interesting and it was i have to say the casting process you know i had some great narrator options that it was hard to choose, and I didn't think I would have quite such a hard time choosing, but they were really, each one brought a different aspect of the book, a little bit more alive, right? Anyway, uh, overall, you know, I I thought J.S. was going to, was really getting the feel of the book overall. And definitely, there were, you know, the way that he would do you know, some of the dialogue was not the way I heard it in my head initially when I was writing it, but I love the way he does it. It's like, oh, yeah, okay, that's who James is, you know, and being able to allow for that, you know, I, I mean, I know very well, and I've told many authors, you know, it's never going to sound the way that it sounds in your head. It can't. It's impossible. I have a whole podcast episode just about that. <laughs> but I encourage authors to go into the process without, you know, just let go of that, any expectation around that. Forget what it sounds like in your head and find out what it could sound like. And that allowing just can open things up and, and some beautiful discoveries and like taking your book to a whole new level can happen. And that's the beauty of audio. And it really is amazing to be able to bring other people into your creation and see their take on it. And I, I truly believe that it enhances your work and what you have there already. It, it adds that, that new additional element to, to the book and gives it depth and body and feel. And yeah, as long as you've got an open mind and you're ready to, to go on the journey and let people delve into that world, that creation of yours, it's it's a really good option, audio. And I, I'm really grateful to have been lucky enough to to work in the space and have grown some knowledge around audiobooks from yourself, Becky. And it's it's really, really inspiring. And I'm looking forward to um, working on more books in the future yeah. with you. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that seems like a great place to wrap up. Thank you again uh, so much, Jared. This is Jared Chambers. And I want to just one more time highlight the book that we initially worked on, Searching for Mon Kumar, that we did with, with your father, Gordon Lee Chambers. So thanks so much for spending this time with me. Thank you, Becky. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for joining us for Audiobook Connection, behind the scenes with the creative teams. Please take a moment to subscribe at audiobookconnection.com. 
The podcast is sponsored by Pro Audio Voices, helping great stories come alive through audiobook production and marketing. Learn more at ProAudioVoices.com. Again, thanks for being with us, and please join us next week.